Presidente, to run this program, this very short program. Amanta! 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 Viva EFF Viva! Viva EFF Viva! Thank you very much, fighters. I'm going to call upon the chairperson of the province to welcome us all. Commissar Mukweb. Manda, Manda, there is no rain in the revolution, there is a revolution in the rain. Manda, Mata, Sharona, thank you very much, National Chair. You are all welcome, our leaders, the President, our Secretary General. The province of Gauteng is always the host, is always the home of the EFF, where the ground forces are always available to listen to the call of the organization. We listen to the mandate every day, time and a two, when they say we must gather and support our organization. Fighters must not forget this case is not against the president of the EFF. It's against the EFF as a whole. All of us were affected about this case against our people. By so saying, fighters, in short, all of you, you are welcome to this province. Let's continue to gather and work together. Amanda, away to Mata, Wakinta Mafazi, Wakinta Mbogoto. Let's not check. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissar uh, Mukwebo, the chairperson. We are not going to be very long. Now I'm going to call upon the SG uh, to come and brief us. Secretary General. Amanda! 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 Your leader, Commander in Chief, not me! 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 Come on, President! Amanza! Amanza! Viva EFF Viva! Viva EFF Viva! Tata EFF Tata! Tata EFF Tata! Down Afri Forum down! Down Afri Forum down! Down Alan Zile down! Down Alan Zile down! Down Sul Ramaphosa down! Down Sul Ramaphosa down! Manda! Thank you very much, comrades, our officials, SG, National Chair, TG and DSG, the chairperson of the province and secretary PCT members. We want to thank you for coming out today as we are attending to matters that affect the organization. We were told that today will appear for the second day and we are asked certain questions the matter is now in the hands of the court. We will wait for the court to tell us if our struggle was a struggle for it or not. Because all we are doing is to repeat that which we repeated, we did before 1994. And all we are saying to the court and to the racist whites that ours has never been a struggle of hatred. Ours has been a struggle for a just cause. And we will fight until the wealth of this country is shared amongst all the people of South Africa. Key amongst those is the issue of the land. We want the land returned in the hands of the rightful owners. We want the mines and the banks to be returned into the hands of the rightful owners. We want free quality education to be given to our children from grade one up until you get a degree. So fighters, the Boers don't want us to have that. The only organization they take to court 
without fail every day is the EFF because they want to kill the EFF so that black people can remain in squalor and in poverty. Any organization that fights for black people, they don't want it. So we are saying to these children of Jan van Riebeck that you will pay for the sins of Jan van Riebeck. We want everybody who colonized Africa, who colonized South Africa, to pay reparations to the people of South Africa. The land alone is not enough. We want the land that comes with money because we must work the money. So fighters, we must continue to tell them everywhere where a white person becomes a racist, you must say to them, you are still owing us a reparation. You are being paid the reparation. Because the white people owe us. They are what they are because of the sweat and the blood of African people. All of this, Johannesburg, you see, with big buildings, these were not built by white people. They were built by our parents who were exploited, who were not paid anything, who were treated like slaves. So we want reparations because we are being owed. Those who have not paid our great, great, great parents, we, they shall pay us on behalf of our great, 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 great China. You feel the father of my father, the father, the father, father, father. So we are still on that thing that our great, great, great fathers and mothers fought for. It has not been achieved. We remain a conquered nation, but we refuse to die a conquered nation. We are fighting because. We are children of warriors. Our great-grandfathers were never cowards. They fought the armed soldiers of Britain with spears only and killed many of them. So we come from those types of people. We are not barbaric. They say when we sing, kill the poor, kill the farmer, you will go and kill poor. But our people sang this song when they were very angry, but they never killed them. We are angry, but not like those who came before us. We have no reason to kill them. We are just telling them through song, we don't like you because you killed our parents and stole our land. They need to know that we don't like what they've done and what makes us more angry is that they are refusing to pay for what they did. What's even worse, they are refusing to say sorry. He says to me, I must take a pledge that I will not call for the killing of white people when declared can water and Malan have never taken a pledge that they will never kill black people. They killed our people. I will never take such a pledge. Why would I do that? So they must apologize and take a pledge that we denounce what our great-grandfathers did. And we pledge that we will not do what our great-grandfathers did to our great-grandfathers. If they make that commitment, then we can start talking about reconciliation. How do you reconcile with a person who doesn't say sorry? Even at home, the first sentence when you are wrong is sorry. Then you can talk about other things. So the whites have become so arrogant. They want us to say, we are taking a pledge, we will not kill you. But we have never killed them. They have killed us. And they have never taken a pledge 
even after 1994, that they will not kill us again. If they get an opportunity, these people will kill us again. Because that's how much they hate us. How do you demand peace from peaceful people? We are peaceful people and our peace must never be confused for cowardice. When the need arise, we will die for this land. But we will not die without putting up a fight. We will fight and we will die with our boots on. You must never surrender to a white man. You must never die in front of a white man being on your knees asking for forgiveness. When he wants to kill you, you must tell him, shoot me on the head, not at the back, so that my people can see I was not running away. I confronted death and I was never scared to die. They are cowards. They are scared of songs. We were never scared of their guns. When they came with rifles that are aimed at a war, we came with stones in 1976 and we defeated them with stones. That's why we can stand here in town where they didn't want us. We want you to come here in town. This thing of staying in Alexander and Soweto must come with must come to an end with our parents. We deserve to be here because our parents were pushed from here to go into Soweto and Alexander. We are going back to reclaim that which was taken from our parents. So by being here, you are not only attending the court. By being right in the middle of the street and closing the street, you are reclaiming that which belongs to you. Because when the poor see you standing like this, they are offended. They don't like you in town. They don't like you in these numbers worth occupying the center of the city. So when we say to you, Come here every day. We want you to fall in love with the city again. So that one day you come here and you never go back. You find yourself an apartment here. And you stay here because we belong here. They don't belong here. They found us here and pushed us out of the city. There is nothing hate about that. Let them judge the song the way they want to judge it. But I can tell you, there is no code of conduct at the picket lines. You, there is no hymn book at the picket lines. You can't say to the angry protesters, this is the song we sing, that's the song we don't sing. You cannot choose what the picket lines do. So picket lines have got no formula. And therefore to try and regulate the picket lines through the courts, you will never win. There is no picket line that can be regulated. Our people, when they are angry, they will discharge their anger the best they know how. And no one can tell you, be angry this way, be angry that way, especially your enemy. Your enemy can never give you advice on how you must fight them. No, don't hit me here, hit me this side. And then you take the advice of the enemy. It means you are planning to lose already. Fighters, we remain committed to the struggle. We remain committed to Peter Mukaba's ideas. We remain committed to the struggle for the liberation of our people. And we make no apology and we will never retract, we will never sell our people. We don't have money. They ask us here. They said we will pay 500,000. Where will we get the money? Yeah. If they give us money of reparation, maybe we have a Zama, 500,000. But money we don't have. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
without being shaken. Since they opened parliament until today, on the lips of the people of South Africa was EFF. EFF this, EFF that. Because we are in charge of South African politics. We are the only organization of thinkers. We are happy yesterday, Ramaphosa, when he responded in the State of the Nation address, he said he knows government creates jobs. Because we taught him a lesson that we are not going to be politics. You must say government create jobs. He came back, retreated from that nonsense that the private sector will create jobs. He was even quoting China and how China is doing very well. He now all of a sudden abandoned the DA policy for a leftist policy because the EFF successfully contested him. Comrades, you don't understand the amount of work you are putting. Since you came into existence in 2013, throughout South Africa, the topic was privatization. The topic was gear. The topic was those neoliberal policies of Tabumbi. Until we introduced nationalization and expropriation of land, today South Africans speak about those things with ease because the EFF has changed the narrative in South Africa. Let us continue to put pressure, let us continue to fight, let us not be shaken, it will not be easy. To be brought to court is part of the struggle. To go into prison is part of the struggle. To die is the highest honor in the struggle. That is why we are not scared to die for what we represent and what we stand for. The poor know that very well. That's why they are always chasing after us. We are not in a pocket of any white man. We are the only thing in South Africa that is 100% black owned. We are not a brand. We don't brand for any white man. We are black owned and we will remain like that forever. They hate blacks who stand on their own. But if there was a white man who says to Afri Forum, leave them, I've got them, I saw them out at night, they won't cause a problem. Afri Forum was not going to bring us here. But the bringing of the EFF to court by Afri Forum, it's a confirmation that the EFF is the only organization without a vast. Arena vast arena. Arena Madame Why will these people of every boat? Hey, when you want your Malay, hey, when you want your EFF, hey, when you want your Malay, every time Mabu Reva to a fear more, Faris Malema, that's what they know because Malema keeps them up at night. Why? Malema and the EFF are not captured. That's why the whites are worried that these people are not captured and we don't control them. Because we are not captured, this place is going to be our permanent home. They are going to bring us here all the time. And if they can imprison us, they are going to kill us. But they must know they will never kill our ideas. Our ideas are already out. The EFF is growing bigger and bigger. The, the killing of Malema is a waste of time because we produce many Malemas out there. In each, in each and every family, there is a Malema. How many of you are here? How many of you are here? What are you doing, Malema? Because we taught our children and the youth of South Africa to stand on their own and not to be scared and worse, not to be scared of a white man. Fighters, 
Let's continue to fight. Let's meet tomorrow in our numbers, Hector Peterson Square. Let's go and launch our campaign. Every weekend, we are going to recruit in numbers until we reach one million. So we know that EFF exists in every family, in every street, in every village, in every township, in every factory, in every workplace, and a learning place in the universities and high schools. We need a vibrant EFF because you are the future and no one can stop you. Amanda! 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 FIFA! EFF FIFA! FIFA! I didn't ask those lawyers if I can sing that song. Oh, you're
so that uh, we take into consideration uh, the traffic and all those things. So, Tabarele Kwa, nine o'clock, all of us must be in Hector Pitassi. Amanda! Away too! Thank you very much.